Good morning. And I know that um, you, we are all together here on, uh, online on Facebook, and that's where we've decided to keep our worship right now. Um, even though we can come together according to the Commonwealth's guidance in community worship, we feel very strongly that it is not quite safe to do that yet um, due to the restrictions we have in our building um, and on aspects. So at least through the month of June, we will continue with online worship just like we are here. We are together in worship online. Um, and know that, um, that God, Jesus has said, wherever two or more are gathered in his name, um, he shall be there. So he's in each of our hearts, each of our homes, and in this building right now. Also, I'd like to bring up that um, we can, if you have donations, offerings to make, um, although you can't place them in the plate, you can mail them here. And the address, the mailing address is 302 Chickabee Street, um, in Chicopee. So you can mail in your offerings. The church still has to pay our bills, electricity, um, and all the other things that we have. Um, and we are hurting a little bit um, and the type of offerings that we're getting. So just to keep you informed on that. Also about money if scholarships are open. So if you are attending or about to attend college and are in need of a scholarship, you can get a hold of us here at 413-592-0396 and we will get you an application for the scholarship at that time. Our, our ministry of breaking bread with the community is continuing and at least on June 21st, we will again be offering a meal. Um, it'll be a drive-through aspect again with uh, picking up your meal and also um, receiving blessings as we come together to do that. And having said that, our pantry is still open, so if you're in need of food or anything at all, please call again that phone number, 413-592-0396, um, and we have food that we can um, offer you to help you in this time of need. The doors may be closed and we may not be together in community worship right now, but the church is not closed. Um, and we're going forward still with the call of Jesus and serving um, our community um, as we go forward. So um, welcome to our online worship and we will keep you informed of when we feel that we can come together um, in community worship. So let's leave everything that we carry on our shoulders throughout the week as a burden behind and prepare to come together and worship God. So God is with us right here and right now. And so we open our lives to the Creator. God cares for us and gives us glory. And so we open our hearts to the Creator. God appoints us keepers of the earth. And so we dedicate ourselves to the Creator. Come, let us worship God together. right here and now we open our hearts to our creator god cares for us and gives us glory we open our hearts to our creator god appoints us keepers of the earth we dedicate ourselves to our creator and now with one voice let us offer up our prayer of invocation merciful and just god we gather here this morning each of us with many concerns on our hearts. Our hearts are concerned with systems of injustice which strip people of their dignity and their very lives. Help us to be those who would seek peace and justice, who would fight for those who are oppressed, 
offer voices for the voiceless and dignity for all humankind. Be with us this day and guide our steps toward a more just world in your name. Amen. Our hymn of praise this morning is hymn number 135, Praise Ye the Triune God. where we realize our desire for God and our hope for God's mercy. It is in admitting the truth of our lives that we take the first step towards wholeness and healing. So let us make our confession, first aloud and then in silent prayer, as we pray this, our prayer of confession. Holy God, we were created in your image an image of mutuality and respect for one another, an image of dance ever moving, ever in tune, one with others, an image of community with shared blessing and mission. You have given us dominion over the work of your hands. You have charged us to be fruitful and multiply, to make all nations. We have abused the earth's resources for our own selfish gain, and the consequences wreak havoc upon the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and every living thing that moves upon the earth. We have regarded some of your children as other, and therefore beyond the reach of your love and care, because of their perfect faith in you, or lack thereof, is different from our own. Forgive us, God, for we have defiled your image. God seeks to see broken relationships restored and has heard our prayer. In the name of Jesus Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. And now with one voice, let us offer up the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, to deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
to our time of sharing, a time of sharing our joys and our concerns as we come together in one in prayer to God. prepare to come together in a moment of prayer. God of love and mercy, you have given us stewardship to care for this wonderful planet and to care for our neighbors. We have been blessed with a variety of gifts and talents and you call us to use them to help others. Open our hearts today to ministries of peace with justice. Embolden us to become part of the great cloud of witnesses who are unafraid to be your disciples. We think of so many in this church and in our lives who have gone before us, braving the difficulties presented by life. We name them in our hearts before you, grateful for their example. We also name in our hearts those people who are ill, who mourn, who feel lost and alone, those who are part of cultures of oppression and indignity, help us to be those people who, by our example, will break those chains of poverty and burst the doors that imprison their spirits. Be with this church, that it may be a true witness of Jesus Christ in all we do. Today, we especially lift up Uncle Al, who is fighting both leukemia and pulmonary fibrosis. Let him know and his family know that you are present and with you all things are possible. Oh God, it occurs to us that our prayers are sometimes one-sided. So today our prayer is not only for the usual things we pray for, but also for the opposite things. We pray today not only for the sick, but for the well, lest pride rule happy hearts. We pray not only for the poor, but also for the rich who find it so hard to enter the kingdom of heaven. We pray not only for the troubled, but also for the favored ones, lest peace with the world be confused with peace of God. We pray not only for the dying, but also for the living, since they too face eternity as well. We pray not only for the burdened, but also for the casual, lest indolence hurt the soul. We pray for not only the president of our country, but also the people. The people, yes, because it is they who pay for misrule when it comes. We pray for those that are in peaceful protest. May they be safe and not face violence from those that are meant to protect them from harm. We pray for our brothers and sisters who are harmed because of the color of their skin. We pray for the police. May they find in their hearts the love for their neighbors that they have for themselves. We pray for all the people as we come out of this shelter in place and begin to open up our states. May we do so safely, not infecting others, thinking of human life to be as important as a thriving economy. We pray for our church, that it may be supported in this time of scarcity and time of gatherings that are not in physical togetherness. We also lift up thanks. Thanks for everything we have. Thanks for this life that we have. We also lift up the pregnancy of Emily, 
May she see your presence and remain safe until she delivers. We also lift up Grandpa Paul and may his patience last until the day of delivery. Holy One, may we continue to feel your presence, hear your words, and understand your teaching. We pray all this in the name of your Son, our Lord, our Savior, our friend Jesus. Amen. God said, 
Let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed, and fruit trees of every kind on earth that bear fruit with the seed in it. And it was so. The earth brought forth, forth vegetation, plants yielding seed of every kind, and trees of every kind bearing fruit with the seed in it. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the third day. And God said, let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night. And let them be for signs, and for seasons, and for years, for days, and for years. And let them be lights in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth. And it was so. God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day, the lesser light to rule the night, and the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth, to rule over the day and over the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good, and it was evening, and it was morning, the fourth day. God said, let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth, across the dome of the sky. So God created the great sea monsters and every living creature that moves of every kind, with which the waters swam, swarm, and every winged bird of every kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them, saying, be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters in the seas and let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind, and the cattle of every kind, and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind and God saw that it was good. Then God said, let us make humankind in our image, according to our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the wild animals of the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in his, in his image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, See, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree with seed in it is fruit. You shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the air, and to everything that creeps on the, on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw that everything he had made, and indeed it was very good. It was evening, and it was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all their multitude. And on the seventh day, God finished the work that he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all the work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it, because on it, God rested from all the work that he had done in creation. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created. This is the word of God. Our second reading this morning comes from 2 Corinthians, chapters 13, verses 11 to 13. Finally, brothers and sisters, farewell. Put things in order. Listen to my appeal. Agree with one another. Live in peace, and the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you. 
the grace of the Lord Jesus, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. God is still speaking. We do not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from your mouth. Make us hungry for this heavenly food, that it may nourish us today in ways of eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, the bread of heaven. Amen. Today's gospel reading comes from the gospel according to Matthew, chapter 28, verses 16 through 20, and I'm reading from the message. Meanwhile, the eleven disciples were on their way to Galilee, headed for the mountain Jesus had set for their reunion. The moment they saw him, they worshipped him. Some, though, held back, not sure about worship, about risking themselves totally. Jesus, undeterred, went right ahead and gave his charge. God authorized and commanded me to commission you, Go out and train everyone you meet, far and near, in this way of life, marking them by baptism in the threefold name, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Then instruct them in the practice of all I have commanded you. I'll be with you as you do this, day after day, right up into the end of the age. This is the gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. May your ears be open to hearing and your hearts to receiving. You know, we as human beings go a long way in talking about and thinking about it's all about me. You see, even though we really want to help others, we think it's just about us. And be honest with you, there's times that we really go out and think it's just about me. I mean, we say it, I just need this time for myself, I need this peace for myself. In my other calling, I see some of the people that go out and aid people who are dying have to do things that aren't about the patient, it's about them, it's about making them feel good for doing those things. Now that in itself is not a bad thing, but it becomes a bad thing then when it's about me becomes more than about the teachings and the practices that we know within our religion based on Jesus' message. Today we heard the creation story, and it's that creation story that shows God's love expressed in that creation, expressed in everything that we have. You see, we should sit here day in and day out and look around of what we have and just be in awe. No way to explain where we come from. Now, we, more like our ancestors, who expressed their faith through this creation story, giving thanks to God for everything that we have. And sometimes we tend, in modern day, to forget about that, thinking we provided, or we can provide, everything that we need. It even amounts to more than that, that we only tend to give when we feel our prayers are answered. That's when our faith is at its peak, when our prayers seem to be answered. See, we have so many voices that are coming at us day in and day out that are not the voices of God. We hear it when we turn on the TV, when we watch the news. And again, I advise you to do that in little bits and pieces only. You see, those voices tend to 
drown out the voice of our still speaking God. Because most of those voices are coming at us in a way that's saying, it's all about you. See, God never said that. Even in this creation story where God said, I'm giving you all these things so that you may eat, that you may live. But God didn't say, I'm going to keep them there in abundance even if you abuse them. You see, we see that day in and day out, that we abuse this planet that God made for us. Because humans think higher of ourselves than we do about other things. We never think about how we were really created or how we are to be sustained. We only think of the abundance that we have we ignore the creation story day in and day out. We ignore the gift of God when we pollute the waters, when we pollute the air, and when we kill our brothers and sisters. You see, God called us to be stewards of all creation, not just for ourselves. We have left becoming caretakers and have become more consumers. We tend to consume everything we have. And during this COVID crisis, we see that. We go into the grocery stores and get upset when things that we normally are able to get aren't there. We wonder who is holding those out so that we can't have those items. We're not thinking about our brothers and sisters that work in the plants that produce this. We're not thinking of our brothers and sisters who drive the trucks that deliver it to us. We're not thinking of our brothers and sisters who put themselves at risk so that we can have it. No, we're only thinking about why that's not there. Our country is clearly a consumer country. That's what we're here to do, to consume things. You see, we care for only ourselves. And the 2% that tends to run our country, well, they care about how much money is in their pocket. You see, just this week, I heard that we are in a great place because the stock market is on its way up. At that time, 105,000 of our brothers and sisters in our country had died from COVID. And they continue to die based on this virus. But everything is okay because unemployment has dropped to 13%. See, we're licking this because unemployment's at 13%. What wasn't mentioned is that the unemployment of our brothers and sisters of color continue to be above those of ourselves. See, we're happy because we're back to work. From the beginning of the Bible, from the beginning of the time, this has been a challenge. We need to reflect back as to who we say we are. Not only from our mouths, not only from our words, but also in our actions and how we live. You see, as a consumer, when we buy things, it's good for the economy. It's good for everyone. But it's really only good for the percentage that's on the top. COVID-19 has proved to us that when our consumer economy is no longer able to sustain, then we believe we're in crisis, even though we have enough food to eat and water to drink. What was really interesting during this COVID-19 crisis is that the world, the environment, is cleaning itself up. I don't know how many of you saw the canals in Venice where you now can look down and see the bottom of the canal where you couldn't see it before. Or seeing the pictures of the smog in places like Los Angeles 
and New York that you now can see the cityscape. In Europe, you can see for miles and miles where you couldn't see before. The animals who no longer in places like Africa are kept back because of the humans that are running around are now reclaiming their land. You see, we forget where we came from. We think that God only created us in God's image. And therefore, we're superior to everyone else. See, we need to be humbled before God, thankful to God that God created us. But we think we are in charge. We think that we are the ones who can change everything. But with the freedom that we have to act independently, that God gave us free will, we also need to act with responsibility. You see, we're responsible for the care of all of creation, not just for ourselves. And that goes for the creation of all humans, not just us. We tend to read the gospel backwards. We did it today on this Trinity Sunday, which Trinity is a concept which is hard for many people to grasp. We say it, the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, and therefore we know what it's about, but think about it. See, today in the readings, we started with Genesis where God created the world. And we know that as we go through, we're going to hear God speaking through other people like Abraham and Sarah and Moses and so many others. And then we're going to come up to the gospel. When Jesus, God, walked on this earth. And we read backwards in that, that God is calling us just like God did in the creation story to be disciples of God. To care for it. Jesus, who spoke from a position of privilege, by the way, used that privilege to reorient people's views, to go out and work within the margins, to accept those people who weren't like him. And it wasn't until Jesus' privilege had exceeded and made people who were talking only about themselves that he was nailed to the tree. You see, we're called to live like Jesus, to love like Jesus, to be a steward like Jesus. So what does the ownership that we have or we think we have of this planet mean to us? See, does creation really belong to us? Or do we belong to creation? And if you switch that, it's, is it really about me? It's also about a view of abundance or of ex excess. See, we live in a period of excess. We live in a time where our expectations are that that excess is going to be there for us. And when it's not, then the lives of our brothers and sisters are less than that excess. You see, I heard a story this week about this $600 extra that's given to unemployment. And you hear it all the time from our Senate leaders saying it, they make more money when they're not working than when they work. Well, I can tell you that our Senate president has not been on unemployment because what you collect is less than what you make. So when we give that extra $600 so those people can live, we're jealous. We want it. Why should they get it? It's tough to be an essential worker, I'm sure. It's tough to go to work every day when some people aren't doing that, it's tough to put yourself at risk, especially when you think it's all about me. It's tough to see the unemployment or even tougher to see the, la the unemployment go away that we think that those who remain on unemployment are lazy or looking for a handout. 
You see, we need to make up the difference for our brothers and sisters. We need to be there for them. We don't need to be jealous. Our political leaders need to be there for the people. Our political leaders need to be there for the world. That is what God has called us to do. God did not create the United States of America. God created the world. And when God looked at the world that was created and all the flaws that God knew was there, God said, it is good. It only becomes bad when we think about ourselves more than we think about our neighbors. Think about it. I don't know how many of you have been to the grocery store lately, but the prices are through the roof. I get it, it's harder to manufacture, it's harder to ship, but should it be a time when our corporation's money is going, or our corporation's profits are rising? as fast as the prices are. Think about what's going on now. Think about the kneeling on a person's neck, that that became so publicized, as it should. But look at what the police have done during this period of time. Just the other day, an elderly man was pushed to the ground, his head hitting the ground, and the police walked on by. Now, 99% of those in uniform wearing a badge would not have done that. And many of those are marching and kneeling with the pro protesters too. Not all police would do that. But those police who kneel with the protesters, those police have left it's all about me and have come to love their neighbors. <clears throat> Jesus calls for us to care for the least of these. Jesus calls for us to be there for our neighbors. Jesus calls us to love and not to hate. Jesus calls to us to face the atrocities and not be a coward and shelter in a bunker. Jesus calls for us to be there for each other. You see, the Trinity affirms the gospel. God created the earth and did not leave us. Jesus ascended to heaven and did not leave us. The Holy Spirit is still with us. God created the world and called people like Abraham and Sarah to be spokesmen. God came to earth and blessed and healed in Jesus. God empowers the church through the Holy Spirit. We worship an awesome God. From the beginning and throughout all history, God has been there for us. It's not all about us. It's about creation. Amen. God has abundantly bestowed upon us the gifts of life. Our best response is to offer our whole lives as agents for God's mission in the world. Give as you are able to build the community of God in our homes, in our congregation, and in our world. Come, let us give of ourselves.
Receive these gifts, even our very lives for your service. Multiply them and our efforts to meet the need. We are yours, God. Use us, we pray. Amen. So I hope everyone at home has some bread and some juice or wine or water to participate. You see, as God calls all people to the table of forgiveness, peace, and loving fellowship, First Congregational Church of Chicopee affirms an inclusive and open communion table. All persons, all ages, ethnicities, sexual orientations and identities, dis and abilities, religious affiliations, <clears throat> and other distinguishing features are welcome to partake of this sacrament which affirms that we are all part of God's family and are to commune together in sacred spiritual meeting place. Therefore, all who wish to join this ritual of unity are invited to do so, providing that you do so in the spirit of peace and mutual love for one another. Come, the table is ready, and Jesus sits at the head of this table as he does at the head of the table in your home. Come. All are welcome. God seeks to be in communion with us and wills that we be in communion with one another. Through the Christ in Jesus, God drew closer to us by living among us with all the desires and temptations of being human and showed us that we each have the power to overcome wrongdoing by the inspiration of our spiritual lives and the discipline of our physical lives thereby effecting in Christ in us. Jesus represented the individual model of how we each can do this, and in calling to his side the disciples and followers of his way of love and peace, many of whom were ostracized by the wider society. He revealed how to model this in our community here on earth, reminding us symbolically of this union of body and spirit, Jesus took a loaf of bread broken like we are often broken in our relationships with one another and showed us the way to reconciliation by asking us to share our bread with one another in remembrance of his own example. Through the broken bread, we participate in and become the body of Christ in this world. In like manner, Jesus took the cup filled with the fruit of the vine, the vine that sustains us and links us to one another, and the fruit that nourishes the spirit of virtue that abides within and between us and asks us to drink of the same spirit of loving kindness and uniting harmony that was within him. Through the cup of blessing, we participate in and become the new life of Christ in the world. And so we remember that on the night of his arrest and eventual death, he took bread, he broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and eat from it. For this is my body, broken for you and for all of humankind. Each time you eat from the common loaf, do it in remembrance of me. We remember that when supper had ended, he took the cup, he gave thanks and praise to God, took the cup and gave it to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of the new covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all of humankind. Each time you drink from the fruit of the vine, do it in remembrance of me. Let us come together in the spirit of, holy, of prayer. Come, Holy Spirit, come and bless this bread, we pray. Remind us of the interconnectedness of people around the world. Come, Holy Spirit, come and bless this cup of covenant and bless this fruit of the vine, we pray. May this simple meal bring us into union with you, your people and your world, united in the one body of Christ. Amen. This is the body of Christ. The body that knows what it is like to long for a hug, but not be able to get one. This body knows how to feel a hug through the window or a screen. This body knows what it is like to be afraid. This body knows what it is like to be loved out of this fear. This body knows what it is like to be hungry, but not able to go to the store to get food. 
This body knows the sadness of having enough food, but feeling the hunger of others. This body feels helpless in the face of injustice. This body is energized for activation to change the unjust structures of our society. This body knows what it is like to lose its job when it needs it the most. This body knows what it is like to work in a hospital without enough protection. This body knows what it is like to be alone in a hospital bed, unable to have visitors. This body knows the joy of getting a phone call from anybody. This body knows what it is like to wake up in the middle of the night worrying. And this body knows what it is like to fall back asleep and to dream. Take and eat, and may you hunger no more. This is the cup of the new covenant. Take and drink, and may you thirst no more.
Loving and gracious God, thank you for this holy meal. Thank you for Jesus and his all-inclusive love for humanity. And thank you for this day, which we worship and serve you. Amen. And again, thank you for being with us here online as we continue to worship in community the God, the awesome God that we serve. Know we'll reach out to you and let you know um, when we will come together and worship again in community. I don't see it happening anytime um, very soon, but when the church leadership believes that it is safe for us to come Considering the constraints we have here in the building, we will once again come together. But know that this online worship is us worshiping our awesome God. So our hymn of journey this, this morning is hymn number 237, Lord, dismiss us with thy blessing.